I told you I'm going to be telling you about making awesome audio products or, or things, what we has learned. So, um, I am director of software for In Music, if you do not know. That is Akai, Alasis, M Audio, Air, uh, Den and DJ, uh, just a whole load of super fun MI uh, products. And we make really, really sexy things. I'll show you some of those in a second. I'm also a programmer, author, columnist, teacher. Uh, conscientious coder, written books, magazines, and things. These days, a little bit more on the pointy head boss side of things, but I still write code. Um, now, these are the sexy things we make, and these are some of the things I will uh, I will tell you a little bit about some of the some of the war stories or uh, things we have learned. And then, I just if you have any questions, just ask me stuff. Um, so, like music production stuff, the MPCs, super popular. These really sexy DJ products, um, and also we've got a whole load of these. We're showing on a table over there at the back in the of the of the, uh, the coffee area. And if you haven't had a play with them, come over and have a look because we love them. They're very sexy. Um, these also uh, guitar products. We've just released this one. Uh, super cute, super small. Sounds awesome. So um, really fun stuff in there. We have. Uh, Dev offices all around the world as well. Just a global, uh, global software development organization, which is fun. I've just been in this sort of nebulous, not existent area down here in New Zealand, setting up a new development team, which is kind of fun. But yeah, we even have people uh, sitting in their underwear in the south of Spain, uh, coding on things for us. Um, and the things we make, interestingly, are these standalone products and also desktop uh, software as well. And some of, the, some of the interesting problems we've encountered is sharing code bases between these two things. I will talk a bit about that. So um, the pitch, making awesome audio products. Now, this is a 25-minute session. And no disclaimer, we are um, the only reason I'm giving this talk. Oh, I love talking. Um, but uh, we're, we're sponsoring um, the event, and, and we paid. Therefore, I, I get a chance to talk at you. Hurrah, hurrah. Thank you for coming and listening anyway. Um, however, I did not want to be some terrible advertising pitch. And uh, so I basically, oh, what I'm going to talk about. So blockchain, uh, machine learning, AI, <laughs> virtual reality, AR, uh, unicorns on tricycles. Right, so we've got like uh, all of the cool things are in this talk. You've just seen them. And uh, the, the, the shield, we are hiring. That's why we're exhibiting here. So if you are interested in, in helping make these fun products, that's cool. But there's no point in, I, d I don't think a shill kind of talk is interesting. So I just wanted to, to share some stuff. Um, so over the last few years, we have been making really cool things. Um, and there were just some things that really surprised us, problems that we encountered that we were even surprised we had to solve some of these problems. And that's what I thought I would share. Um, so uh, making great things. Great things are done by a series of small things brought together. And uh, yeah, I think that's very true. I don't know if that's your experience from your product development. but uh, so. Of those audio products I showed you, the DJ things, the production things, the, uh, the guitar things, the, the, those standard products are all built on a common platform, which is really quite cool. So we built our uh, brand new hardware platform and, uh, and an operating system layer and a whole lot of common things that sit on top of them. But obviously, each of these different products uh, are for different kind of musicians and have different problems uh, that they have to solve. So yeah, some, some common... Um, obstacles that they have to jump over, and some specific to their categories. Um, in general, so of all of them, the, the category I find the most complicated, really, is the production stuff. Uh, the DJ products tend to play one to n streams of audio, and although you might be time stretching them, there might be a bit of trick play going on. You kind of know the resource limitation, you know, the most CPU resource you're going to be using for those products. The same with the guitar products. Actually, they're super uh, impressively engineered to get the maximum kind of uh, uh, effect capability out of a constrained environment. But once you've built a signal chain, you kind of know the CPU load that signal chain is going to take. The production products really keep me awake at night because they might sit there doing nothing for two minutes, and then somebody plays 48 notes on the keyboard at once. I don't know how you do that with 10 fingers, but 14 notes of the keyboard at once, and you've got to instantly respond, and not go wrong, and then carry on. So um, those tend to be more dynamic, but you know, they, all, they all have um, individual little things we have to solve. I'm just trying to find motivational quotes about awesome things. Kanye West, come on. People always tell you, be humble, be humble. I'm a very humble person, just like Trump. But when was the last time someone told you to be amazing, be great, be awesome? Yeah, let's make awesome audio products. Um, so. Category of things number one of the product design. Um, 
this is really fascinating. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but um, we just released a, a new update to our MPC line of production. Uh, it's a drum machine sampler, um, audio track recorder. Now it has synths as well. Really sexy sounding synths built into the product. It, they are awesome. Okay. One of the things we spent an awful long time doing is um, building a new user interface layer. I mean, it's sexy. It's got this seven inch touch screen or a 10 inch if you've got the MCX. Really kind of visceral hands on thing with a knob. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Oh, hooray. Next to the voice of God from next door. Okay. Uh, I won't be thrown. Um, so, really, really um, kind of fun product. And, and the UI was rich already. But we built a new UI layer to help make the insert effects and the, and the synthesizers that I'll show you in a second look much more appealing. And um, here's the thing, in a previous talk, I don't know, a whole load of people have mentioned the talk I gave two years ago, and said, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope this one is as good. Um, but there I said, audio wins over the visual. You cannot ever glitch the audio. You can screw up some visual thing, and the brain will sort of will, uh, will, um, forgive that, but if you screw up the audio, game over, especially for audio products. Um, however, it is actually fascinating, the power of the visual. So <sighs> this was um, our generic sort of parameter editor. It's a, it's a, it's a soup of pointless sort of, I mean, they're labeled. They've got values, and this is a little knob you can drive up and down. It's quite clearly obvious how you use this. This sounds much better. And I mean, it is kind of obvious, but uh, and we, we built this because this is cool. But the comments we got from users as soon as we released this, uh, especially for our insert effects, which only had like some of them only have like four parameters, but you replace these four parameters with four knobs that just look slightly skeuomorphic. This sounds so much better. Like, okay, fine, cool. It sounds better. How it, it is. It's much more fun to use. So, so that was it. it was just an interesting observation. Um, and we did it in the GUI as well. You clearly, I mean, this is a more humane interface, isn't it? Um, and I feel more musical. I can do more musical things. I can interact with things in a more uh, understandable and visceral level. And to be honest with you, these things, you know, we've got the, the wave shape kind of updates as you tweak it. You understand what's going on. So it kind of makes sense. But, um, but it sort of surprised us how much, uh, how much more valuable it made the, uh, the, 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 the products feel. Um, and to that end, um, a lot of what we're building, because we are building, it's not just, you know, virtual software synthesizers, but we're building hands-on controllable things. A lot of what we obsess about is the workflow and giving those things to the users and putting the controls under the knobs and on their fingers. Those are things that we do really nicely. And so you know, we are sort of obsess about how the, the user interface maps to the knobs on the product and giving people the most hands-on experience they can possibly, possibly get. Um, on the product design side, one of our other interesting uh, problems is our eyes are much bigger than our stomach um, in that we want to do loads of stuff. Uh, we have so many products we want to build. We just don't have enough people. And, uh, d do you guys have this prioritization is actually hard. Sometimes there are the things obviously you have to build. If I have a piece of hardware, every button has to do something. It's embarrassing to ship a box with that button. Don't, don't push that button. That button doesn't do anything. Re reserve for future use. You don't do that. Um, but there's, after you've done that, there's so many things we want in our products. We just literally don't have enough people. And when you release a product to the market, everyone's feature request is urgent. I don't know why they don't do this thing. And I love our users. We love that they're excited and passionate about it. But actually, just a genuinely a problem that, that, we, that keeps us awake at night, that we wrestle with. We're permanently reprioritizing, which is the more important thing to add. Um, that's a fascinating problem. I don't have any solutions to that. That's just a fascinating problem. Um, but hey, making cool things is fun. Um, and I'm glad we have that problem. Um, perhaps the more interesting set of, um, of things what we have learned are in the area of constraints. Um, constraints about uh, what we can build and the platform we're building on. Um, again, in that same previous episode, I, I said this. So I, I gave a talk. It was called The Golden Rules of Audio Programming. And sort of some of the punchlines of that, uh, there are certain things you just do not do on the audio thread. Uh, you, you, you can't do these things. You must not do anything that might stall the audio thread. You're all audio professionals. You know this stuff. No locks. No memory location. No logging. Just literally, just, you know, don't do anything. Just generate some silence. Great synth. Um, so don't do any of that. I also told you how to break those rules. That's fine. I and mean, I also, I did mention at the time, it's important to know 
what your deployment uh, target is, your de deployment platform is. Uh, then it was with respect to if you're running on a multi-core system, then make sure your audio path is multi-threaded, you know, exploit the system that you have. Um, kind of the punchline I have here is our system exploited us. Um, so, end previous episode. Um, the thing that we learned, we, we had surprising coupling. Our code was good, but we more coupled than we realized. So, um, yeah, the desktop world is not the same as the standalone world, and I don't know how many of you, I mean, how many of you guys actually work in embedded environments yourself? That's a fair smattering, interesting. So yeah, hopefully some little wry nods, maybe, or, uh, or maybe you've not been kicked by this one and we just suck. Um, but yeah, so some of the, um, the products that we, we build in, in, in the embedded environment. from uh, the legacy of a desktop piece of software. Uh, we we uh, designed them carefully, we, we, um, we ported them carefully, um, and we did work very hard. Some great works uh, performed not by strength, but by perseverance. We had to work very hard to, to get these things naturalized onto a new environment. Um, however, the coupling hit us in some surprising places. Uh, we should decouple all of the things. We should keep our audio thread lock free and completely separate from any other part of the system. And we did. Our code was clearly separated. However, we ended up with surprising performance problems. Our audio thread would stall and we had literally no idea that there was, there was no lock being held, no, uh, <coughs> no races, no deadlocks, no, no anything between our UI thread, audio thread, yet the audio stalling. Why was that? Well, oh, goodness gracious me, I like my quotes. Um, I don't know, that's there, that's cool, it's a good quote though. Um, so, we had this CPU platform, it was, it was, a, it was a cool CPU platform, it's, it's very powerful, yet basically, it was haunted. <laughs> um, and that is, look, it's a constrained, it was a constrained platform, and so the, pr the resource we were contending over was not Johnny Cash. <laughs> it's tenuous, but it's good. Uh, not, not, not Johnny Cash, but um, the, uh, if we were doing something on the audio thread that was completely decoupled, sorry, on the UI thread, that was completely decoupled from the audio thread, but happened to be sufficiently um, memory bandwidth intensive, uh, we'd destroy all the cat. Am I, oh, have I killed your microphone? I don't know what's happening. To you. I apologize. Well, there you go. Um, if, if I did something that was sufficiently... Uh, memory bus intensive, I completely killed the, uh, the, uh, the caches on this poor little, I mean, what is effectively a, a tablet CPU um, system. And so the audio thread was completely starved of memory, memory access. And uh, it's sort of embarrassing one of the reasons we got, I mean, we fixed it before release, but, um, but this, does anyone know what about this caused the problem? Any guesses? Say again, sorry? No, it's, it's this big, slightly translucent grey area here. <laughs> so what we did, this looks sexy, this is like a pop-up menu. I just double-clicked on this field here and this little pop-up menu slid out and this fades back and it looks super sexy. But how do, I don't have GL on this, on this product. The DJ products have GL, they're awesome. This doesn't have GL, it kind of should do really, shouldn't it? Because what I did was I drew, I, I drew the background of this and then I draw a slightly opaque black rectangle over the top and then I slide this out over the top. It looks really nice and if you keep updating the background underneath, you can see it through. But what I'm actually doing is I'm slaughtering the memory bus because I, I, I clear the screen, I redraw this thing, that's, that sent a lot of pixels over to a frame buffer, and then to pre, to, to sort of multiply this slightly translucent black, I have to read every single pixel again and rewrite every single pixel again, thereby basically just completely thrashing the cache. And the poor audio thread's going, I, I, like some memory now. So that was, that was really surprising. Took us a while to find that. Embarrassing when we got there. Just don't do that. I just take a snapshot of the background, blur it a bit, and it's really, it was a really easy fix, but that really surprised us. So that was the coupling coming in a really unusual place. Uh, just, I thought that was interesting, basically. There's no punchline there. It's like, wow, what a weird problem. Um, what's this one? Uh, yeah, no, ma oh, yes, memory was the other thing that got us again. Um, 
So no memory allocation on the audio thread. Don't do any memory allocation on the audio thread. It's a golden rule. We do not do any memory allocation on the audio thread. The boys are sitting at the back there. If they do any memory allocation on the audio thread, an arm is chopped off. Same if you write the word thread in my code. Your arms are chopped off. <laughs> Things that are not allowed. That's fine. However, uh, we have literally just been battling with the most hateful embedded uh, audio processor problem again. <coughs> every now and again, well, not every now and again, when you did a certain operation, the audio thread would stall. And we're like, why is this happening? No memory allocation, no blocking, no locking on the audio thread. The UI thread was doing a very large memory allocation. And again, just because we're running on a real-time kernel, this is a Linux kernel, it just happens that that memory allocation means the operating system has to go, OK, right, stop. I'm going to allocate a whole load of pages. I'll just stop your application entirely for a while. I've got some things to do. Wait, hang on. Hang on. In a minute. Now carry on. Like, that's no <laughs> use. What sort of real-time operating system is that? OK, to be fair, we were asking for a lot of memory. So the solution to that is just you know, be sensible at how you allocate memory. But again, it was, it was, we were doing all the right things. And that's the thing that surprised us. So uh, what am I saying? Maybe we suck at writing code. Uh, the problems that we ended up having to solve, you can do all the right things, yet you're still surprised that some of the problems you have to solve are not the problems you thought you were going to be solving. Um, literally, that is all I've got to share. Only because I thought that there may be some other interesting problems, or frankly, war stories that you might want to share about, oh, this kind of thing surprised us. Um, so yeah, I, at this point, I, any questions? Go for it. You made, uh, you made an offhand comment that if someone writes the word thread in your code, you get very <laughs> angry. Can you explain why? Yes, there's nothing wrong with threading. We have a multi-core product, and all of our audio processing is inherently very multi-threaded, and you have to do that to explore, exploit the quality or the capabilities of the platform. It's a good question, though, and people always get look at me askance when I say that. Anyone who writes the word thread, as in I'm going to create a thread, and then I'm going to write the run function, usually they don't clean up that thread correctly. It's, it's actually very hard in C++ to write thread properly. You should be using a higher level primitive than the word thread. A thread pool, or a, just some system to run a background <laughs> task. It would be beautiful if you could package it up in a lambda, pass it up to your background thread class, have it run, have it cleaned up nicely, and sign you back in the future. That's what you should be doing. So that is highly applauded, <laughs> and almost always, unless I know that you are trustworthy, if you write the word std thread or deuce thread or whatever, you are going to cause an explosion sometime later in the future, even if you don't realize it. So yes, that, that's, that's the general threat of, uh, of limb removal for thread. Any other questions? Ah, cool. Seeing as you said you were hiring, um, do you pass the Joel test? Do you remember the Joel test? Yes, the Joel test. I, I, I think we do. So CI, yes. Uh, what else have we got going on? Uh, code reviews, fixing bugs mostly. Release. Fixing bugs before releases. Bugs are prioritized, uh, so um, we don't fix every single bug again, but the things that are significant, yes. Um, what else? What else? I don't know myself, but we, as we, we strongly aspire to, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're interested, come and, come and talk to us and like, come down and meet us and see the way we work. Um, Let's say pragmatically, we don't do as much as we should do, and we're investing more in doing it. So I'm not happy because we don't do it enough. We do do it. And the unit tests that we have, um, I'm very picky about this as well. The unit tests that we have run as part of our build. So you don't run, you don't write the code, check it in, and let the CI server run the unit test because then you'll just keep continually breaking the build and getting emails back. You can't even run the desktop if you're done running the desktop version of the code. All of our embedded products, we have a desktop version. We mostly work on the desktop version and then compile down for Linux. You can't even run the desktop version until the unit test, so it's in the build. So we're very picky about that. You know if you've broken the, uh, the unit test because you haven't launched the app that you were trying to do something on. So that's, yeah, um, I feel quite strongly about that. And, I, and yeah, when people don't do that, I start twitching. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, right, so I suggest, if there are no other questions, we all you know, go grab a coffee or later on grab a beer and share these war stories. I think these war stories are really interesting to share anyway. I mean, so I just didn't tell you anything particularly audio related, but it's, it's the power of the story and learning from what you do um, that I just think drives us on and drives the conversation on. So that was it. It was like, okay, cool. Not about, about the time. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, as I said, we are hiring. If you are interested, 
come and talk to us. Otherwise, just come and play with the products because they're over there and they are really, really fun and we love them. Um, thank you very much for listening. Cheers.